Welcome, cricket fans, to the Clean Bowl channel, where we aim to discuss everything West Indies cricket, past, current, and future. Now, folks, we would like to say up front a very special thank you for you tuning in and would like to ask humbly that you please do hit the like and subscribe buttons up front. And if you're unable to do so for any reason, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons before exiting this video. Thank you. Now, let's get started with this episode. Now, we did state initially that we discuss everything West Indies cricket. Normally, when we meant everything, we were referring to content that highlight the accomplishment of West Indian cricketers. But in this episode, we are deviating from that theme and we have chosen instead to focus on four cricketers, yes, four notable and notorious bad guys of the game of cricket, specifically West Indies cricket. These are four cricketers who ran afoul of the cricketing and societal laws. We will go ahead and get started right away with our list of four notorious and notable cricketers. First up, we have for you Leslie Hilton. Yes, Leslie George Hilton was born on the 29th of March, 1905, and passed away on the 17th of May, 1955. Leslie was a Jamaican cricketer, a right arm bowler, and useful lower order batsman who played in six test matches for the West Indies between 1935 and 1939. In May of 1955, Leslie was hanged for the murder of his wife whom he had shot in a jealous rage a year earlier. That's right, Leslie George Hilton. Our next West Indies cricket bad guy is Roy Gilchrist. That's right, we said it, Roy Gilchrist. Roy Gilchrist was an interesting character in the game of cricket, specifically West Indies cricket. Roy Gilchrist was born on the 28th of June, 1934, and passed away on the 18th of July in 2001. Roy was a West Indian cricketer who played 13 tests for the West Indies in the 1950s. He was born in St. Thomas, Jamaica, and died of Parkinson's disease in St. Catherine, Jamaica, at the age of nine, uh, sorry, at the age of 67. That's right, 67. Now, the notoriety, notoriety on Mr. Gilchrist is that Gilchrist's test career might have been longer had he not been sent home halfway through the West Indies 1958-59 tour of the Indian subcontinent after disagreement with his captain, Jerry Alexander. One cause of this was Gilchrist's penchant for bowling beamers or illegal deliveries from 18 yards. This involved deliberately overstepping and bowling beyond the mark by four yards, the established mark, to come closer to the batsman in an effort to intimidate the batsman. In the fourth test at Nagpur, the Indian batsman A.G. Kripal Singh had struck three consecutive boundaries and taunted Gilchrist. Gilchrist then deliberately overstepped the bowling mark by six meters and delivered a bouncer which hit this sick batsman on the head, this his turban. Yes, folks, an example of the notorious West Indian fast bowler and cricketer, Roy Gilchrist. That was not it. In the following match against North Zone, Gilchrist unleashed a barrage of beamers against Saranjit Singh, who Jerry Alexander had known at Cambridge University in England. Gilchrist, of course, ignored his captain's instruction to cease that form of vicious attack. And during the lunch interval, Alexander then substituted Gilchrist out of the team. And he was subsequently sent home to Jamaica while the other players proceeded to Pakistan for the remainder of the tour. It is noted that Alexander told Gilchrist, 
You will leave by the next flight. Good afternoon. This marked the end of Roy Gilchrist's test career. There was suggestion that he had pulled a knife on Alexander at that time, but those were unsubstantiated. Next up on our four notable and notorious bad guys in the game of cricket, West Indies cricket specifically, we have for you an individual by the name of John Campbell. That's right, John Campbell. Cricketer John Campbell, it was reported on October 8th, 2022, was banned for four years from the game of cricket. Jamaican and West Indies cricketer John Campbell was banned for four years for evading or refusing or failing to submit sample collection to the Jamaican Anti-Doping Commission. The decision, it was reported, was an independent anti-doping disciplinary panel's report which precipitated such an action against John Campbell. Now, it is noted that the panel does not find or did not find on the evidence pre presented that the athlete's anti-doping violation was not intentional, meaning to say that it was intentional. And Campbell, who turned 29 at that time and was represented by a slew of attorneys, was banned for his action. Now, according to the decision from the panel, Campbell's ban effectively became active from May 10th, 2022. That is the date that he was notified of his violation. Campbell was a standout batsman as a national youth player and transitioned to the senior national Jamaican team, making his first class debut for Jamaica against Guyana in 2014. He averaged 30.41 in first class cricket before his anti-doping violation. Campbell played his first test for the West Indies in 2019, and after 20 matches, his average was 26.11 with three half centuries in two test series victory over Bangladesh in June of 2019, Campbell showed signs of coming to grips with international cricket and appeared to be on the verge of solidifying a position in the team long term. In six one day internationals for the West Indies, Campbell averaged 49.6 with a best haul of 179 against Ireland. John and now, folks, we've come to the final of our four notable and notorious bad guys in West Indies cricket. None other than Marlon Samuels out of Jamaica. <clears throat> now in 2008, Samuels received a two year ban from the ICC after being caught on tape passing on match related information to an Indian bookmaker during the West Indies ODI series in India the previous year. Samuels had played 71 test matches, 207 ODIs, and 67 T20 internationals and tallied more than 11,000 runs in international cricket. His highest score was a 56 ball 78, or his highlight that is, was a 56 ball 78 in the World T20 final against Sri Lanka in 2012 to help the West Indies win the title. That's right, Marlon Samuels, the former West Indies ODI captain was then again banned from cricket for six years for breaching an anti-corruption code. That in 2023. The all-arounder was found guilty of breaching four counts of the ICC's anti-corruption code while playing in a limited overs competition in the United Arab Emirates. Marlon Samuel banned from the game of West Indies cricket and cricket in general. Now, fans, we have come to the end of the presentation of, of the four notable and notorious bad guys in the game of cricket, specifically as it pertains to West Indies cricket. Thank you for tuning in. And again, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons.